This is either a review of web work or an introduction to web work, depending on whether or not you have used it before. I will be showing you some tips relative to our courses at Valparaiso, but this, the, uh, the landing page and the problems are gonna look very similar no matter where you are working from. And in fact, the problems I'm gonna show you are from the database of problems that's available to everyone. I'm just gonna try a couple of problems and explain how web work works along the way. So this is now the front screen of web work and it has a listing of all the classes. Hopefully you can identify your own class pretty quickly. They're pretty much organized chronologically, if not specifically alphabetical. Um, currently there's three fall classes from the 2021 semester uh, right there at the top. I mean, I'll just click into a couple of these so you can see sort of what they look like. Uh, so I'm clicking into my own Calculus 3 class, which I've already set up for mostly the whole semester. So uh, you can see all the webwork assignments that my students are going to be doing. Uh, your own class, you know, you may or may not have many assignments at all. I have a different class where I'm going to be preparing the problem sets along the way. In this particular Calc 3 class, I have the advantage of just having done it, and so I could essentially recopy everything over to this one. On this front page of any given class, uh, you'll see the list of assignments and the, uh, the closing date of the assignments, and they should be ordered chronologically in terms of impending due date. So you shouldn't necessarily have to dive way down in the list uh, to try to dig out any particular assignment. Now, having said that in my own class right here, I have some assignments which are due by particular deadlines and I have other assignments which are just open throughout the duration of the semester for practice. And so those are going to be at the very bottom because they don't close until December something, right? Whereas these front ones are closing on September 1st, September 5th and so on. So the problems are organized by date of closure. Your instructor may have put some little notes over here on the right hand side, but there's not a whole lot of room for anything specific. So once you've figured out where your class is, you're going to click into it and uh, go do some problems. And now I'll show you how some of those problems work. I actually have some problems, a very small number of problems ready in this template course just set off to the side. So right here you can see that we're going to be working on some web work intro problems just so I can show you some of the features. One of the features that you can see right away in web work uh, before you even get into a particular set is this option to download a PDF hard copy, forget the tech part, uh, download a PDF hard copy. The reason you might want to do this is because you know, if you have your web work window open, something might happen, it could freeze up, etc. So, you know, you know, whenever you're online, there's always the chance that something can go wacky, right? So what you can do here is select an assignment, here there's only one, and use this download PDF or tech hard copy. Um, you're seeing more stuff here than, you sh than normally because I'm logged in as the administrator, um, but I'll still, you'll still find the generate hard copy button. And what you'll see is a printed or a screen version of the questions as you're going to see them in web work. Now, the reason you might want to do this is because then you could print them out and just doodle with them while you're sitting outside in the shade, not being online. And you can prepare your answer for entry when you go back to web work. Another reason to do this is because sometimes the problems contain randomized numbers. Uh, for example, this number three right here, you know, if it was created with randomized numbers in it, whereas my version of this problem starts with a leading 2x, yours might start with a 5x. And so, uh, you know, you because you're going to have randomized numbers, again, you may want to take these problems out and be able to work on them off to the side uh, on your own time without having to sit there being online the whole time. Okay, I'm going to back up to homework sets again. So that is the generate PDF hard copy. There's another button here you want to be alert to, which is the email web work TA button. I won't click it from this level, but when you're in the list of problems, which looks like this when you go into a particular assignment, they're cleverly numbered problems one, two, and three, or however many happens to be built into this one particular assignment from your instructor. Uh, again, the email web work TA button 
is here. You probably don't want to use it at this level though, although it is an option. Uh, let me just go into this problem, problem three. Um, this is just a factoring problem, right? Uh, here we go. So if I scroll down a little bit, you can see more of the options that are available. Let's say I created an answer to this question and typed it in. Um, x. I'm going to factor this as x plus y times 2x minus 9. And let's say I, um, I checked the answers and it came up wrong, but I thought it was right. I could use this email webwork TA button to report my answer to my instructor. Um, it says TA, but it will go to the instructor as well. You may not even have a TA. Uh, but what it does is it sends an email to your instructor with a link to this problem with your input preserved so that you can go back or your instructor, sorry, can go back and look at your input live and see if it was truly correct. They may even be able to make a couple of adjustments and see if the adjustments make it correct. Um, you wouldn't get to keep the adjustments, but your instructor can. Okay. So troubleshooting or just question asking in WebWork is so much better with the email WebWork TA button. Don't take screenshots because they don't do anybody any good. Your, instru your instructor won't be able to tinker with your input or see it live. They'll see a static image, but that might not be enough. Okay, um, so always use that email WebWork TA button to report issues with a problem. Now, I have entered for this factoring problem uh, that 2x times x plus y minus 9 times x plus y when factored is just x plus y, the common term factored out, leaving behind 2x minus 9. Okay, hopefully everybody agrees with that. Uh, this solution thing here is for instructors, uh, not for students. So until the solutions have been designated for release, you will not be able to see those. Checking answers. Click. You will see green when your answer is correct. You'll, you'll, get, you'll get very Pavlovian about this during a term. Uh, you will get this sigh of relief when you see green and this uh, surge of stress when you see red, meaning something is incorrect. Okay, uh, But that's basically it. You type in your answer to the answer box and you check your answers. Or submit your answers if there's grading involved. Now, here's the big thing about the use of web work. Some people might report that web work is picky. You might have used web work and decided that web work is picky. I am here to tell you that web work is not picky. In fact, web work is anything but picky. Web work is designed to be very forgiving about answer entry. The kicker is that it has to be correct answer entry. So if you've been able to get away with bad notation, bad order of operations in handwritten work before, then yes, things might not go well when you're typing in answers. As long as you're entering correct phrases, equivalent answers are always recognized as correct. So for example, in this factoring problem, I'm just going to take that 2x minus 9 and I'm going to move it to the other side. So it's 2x minus 9 times x plus y. I'm going to check it again. It's still equivalent to the one I just submitted, even though I rearranged it mathematically. Oh, look at that. I didn't put a multiplication symbol in between the two groups of parentheses. So let me put one of those in now and check my answers again. Hey, it's still equivalent to the one I just submitted, and it's still correct. Uh, what if I reversed 2x minus 9 and made it 9 minus 2x, but then I put a negative sign out here? And now I check my answer again it's still equivalent to the one I just submitted. All of these answers will, is, are being recognized as correct. They're all equivalently the same function. WebWork knows that. Okay, So WebWork is not too picky. Now, if I decide I want to do something like leave off a parentheses, well, now it's incorrect, right? Well, it's not because uh, WebWork's being picky. It's because the function has been typed in incorrectly in any circumstances. I'm going to go back to the problem list. Let's try something different. Let's try let's try a derivative. Okay, um, asking for the second derivative of tangent of x. Well, the first derivative is secant squared, so the second derivative by a power rule chain rule combination is going to be two times secant of x times secant of x 
times tangent of x. All right, so here's my other piece of advice about web work, other than make sure to use the email web work TA button when you have questions or concerns about your answers. Use the preview my answer button, okay? Because web work is going to show you how it is interpreting your input before that input is submitted. It's going to show you the text you entered and how it is interpreting it. Now, it's pretty easy to interpret to secant x, secant x, tangent x is 2 times secant x times secant x times tangent x. But it's good to, to uh, recognize that it has been answered correctly. Check my answer. Uh, yeah, and that's the right answer. Let's say I was being a little sloppy and whoops, I just put tan x like that. Preview my answers. Oh, look. WebWork still knows that I'm trying to enter secant x times secant x times tangent x as a function, and if I check that work, it is still correct. I do not recommend starting to get sloppy and eliminate parentheses, but if you happen to do it, then WebWork has a good chance of still recognizing what you're entering. So again, WebWork is not picky. You may be used to getting away with improper notation, but that's not WebWork's fault. Let's see, what else could I do here? This is secant x times secant x. So let's say I want to try to trade that for a secant x squared. Ooh, and now I'm nervous. Is WebWork even going to know what that is? Well, preview my answers. And yeah, it sure looks like it's recognizing the two as the exponent on secant. And now if I check that answer, it's correct. Um, like before, I could, I could reorder this. Right? I could smooth I should move the could move the tangent to the middle. Preview my answer. Still looks good. Check it. Hey, it's working. Um, let's let's really run web work through the testing. Let's take tangent and replace it with sine over cosine. And I'm even separating the bits of sine over cosine. So it used to be two times tangent times secant squared is now 2 times sine over cosine times secant squared, but I've even moved the cosine to the far end. Now again, maybe I would like to preview my answer to make sure that I've built my quotient as I intended to, and yes, I have. Let me check it. Oh my gosh, it's still correct. So you tell me, is web work too picky? No, it isn't. As long as you are entering your expressions correctly, <clears throat> Web work will do a very good job of recognizing equivalent functions. And so the magic of web work is making sure that you are using correct syntax, trusting web work will recognize equivalent solutions, and always, always, always use the preview my answer button so that you can see how web work is about to interpret your input uh, before you enter it. And one let me see if I can come up with an example of how you can save yourself. Uh, this secant squared. Let's see. Well, let's see what WebWork does if I move that that squared to the outside. Because now this is ambiguous. Is this the secant function being squared, or is this the secant of x squared? Well, let's see how WebWork is going to take it. Oh, WebWork is still moving that exponent of two onto the secant. And it still considers this a correct expression. But let's say I wasn't using any parentheses at all and I just did that. Right, that's bad notation. Now maybe we're lucky and web work is going to interpret that correctly and looks like it is, but we're just, we're lucky on that one, okay? So use parentheses where you should be using parentheses. Use an asterisk for multiplication to make it explicit. That will help you go back and track down your input if something does need to be fixed. Okay, but just for the folks in the back, web work is not too picky. Maybe you're used to bad notation and getting away with it, but again, that's not web work's fault. So, email web work TA, preview my answers and downloading a hard copy of your problem set in advance if it's advantageous. Those are the three tools that WebWork has to safeguard you against bad input and making sure that you have everything set to go when you go in there. Okay, now during this little overview, I've been using the check answers. When you're live in a problem set and you're looking at the problem list, 
and you go into a problem, one of the options is going to be submit answers. Now, I'm not seeing that because this problem set is not quote unquote live. As the admin, I can just go in and tinker with the problems and run through them over and over. But for you as a student, you will see the submit button. Do not use the submit button until you are genuinely ready to submit your answer. If you have not used preview my answer, do not submit your answer unless you want to run the risk of getting it marked wrong because of some silly input thing that you didn't safeguard against. So let web work help you get your input correct. And if you have questions, either talk to your instructor in person or use that email web work TA button to give your instructor your input live through a link back into web work. Don't just send a screenshot. That is the best advice that I can give you. I hope this has helped.